Let's add some hexadecimal values. We've added binary values. We compared that to adding decimal values. You'll see the pattern is the same no matter what base we're in, but I think it's probably useful that we add just a few of these. I am going to put, let's see, A, D, 8, 3, F, 2, one, and we shall add that to zero. Notice the leading zero adds no value to the number, but I'll still fill it in anyway. Uh, five seven e b eight seven. All right, and addition. Hopefully, it's straightforward. Seven. Plus 1 is 8. 8 plus 2 is A. Okay, it's 10 in decimal, but remember we have to keep with a single digit, and we can represent a 10 in hexadecimal with a single... A 10 in decimal we can represent in hexadecimal with a single digit, which is A. F plus B, what is F plus B? Oh, see, now you got to think letters, and you got to add the number letters and... We're used to adding numbers, and it just makes sense, and it naturally pops up. And now we have to do this mental work, and hopefully you do this work enough that these numbers become natural to you. But what is F plus B? Well, we know in decimal, let me see, use a different color here for decimal. A decimal number F is 15, and then B, well, A is a 10, so B must be 11. So 15 plus 11, so 5 plus 1 is 6. Now we're thinking in decimal, base 10. Okay, let me write the base here if it helps you. I'll put the base there, and then we'll say base 16 here, base 16. It's important that we stay consistent in whichever base we're working in. Uh, okay, 1 plus 1 is 2, so 26. Okay, well, how can I break 26? We know we're going to have a carry, all right? There's, there's not a hexadecimal value uh, or a hexadecimal digit for 26, so we have to... We have to basically bust this up into what, what our carry is going to be. Well, if I if I take away 16, right? If I subtract 16, that's what our carry does. When and basically we have to roll 16 values, and when we roll 16 value, that's going to bump our neighbor. So I'll put the the bump right here or the carry right here, and then what's left over? Well, in base 10, 26. Minus 16, well, 6 minus 6 is 0, 2 minus 1. Well, that's a 10 decimal. Well, we know 10 in hexadecimal is an A. All right, so F plus B is 1A, but we have to move the 1 over to the... Remember, positions matter, D digit positions matter, and so it's important that the 1 comes becomes the carry, and then we leave the leftover change here underneath. Okay, E, F... G H I I can't go G H I. This is hexadecimal. All right. So what's E plus one? That's F. So we have 15 base 10 or decimal, and then this is going to be 18 in decimal. So then we can make the change that that's going to give us a a three here. Or no 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 sorry. 18 minus 16 that will give us a two here, and then we carry that. So so 16 plus two is 18 in decimal. Or uh, equivalent here is E, F, and plus 3. Okay, well, hopefully this makes sense. I'm just adding these the same as we add decimal numbers, except I have to consider the digits to be hexadecimal instead of uh, decimal. All right, 8, 9, uh, eight, uh, 8, 9, what's 9 plus 7? Oh, there's not a hexadecimal value for that, right? We have to use two digits. It's a lot like if I say uh, in decimal, let me... We get a decimal color out here. I'm gonna I think we're done with this. Okay, if I said eight, nine, nine plus seven, well in decimal what is nine plus seven? Nine plus seven. We just naturally see this as a sixteen, okay? But now we need to naturally see it in its hexadecimal equivalent. So what's it well sixteen, gall. <laughs> All right, remember if I if I do my carry over here, I say one there, well that's that's the equivalent of taking out one $16 bill. Right? Subtract 16, well, that leaves us with nothing. So that will, there's no change left over. That's a zero. Okay, and in and, and base 10, you can think of that as adding 
I don't know, what's 7 plus 3? Well, 7 plus 3 is 0. Carry the 1 because we get a 10. Then 1 plus nothing is 10. All right. Uh, D, E, plus 5. Oh, we're going to have another carry. Do you see that? Now, the way I'm working these carries by subtracting 16, that's one way of doing it. Uh, another way of thinking about this, if it helps, if you're not quite used to adding these hexadecimal numbers, uh, another way of thinking about this, let me get blue here. We can write out a hexadecimal number line, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, and then we just start over again, right? This is this makes up one dial on our odometer, if you would. We just let's unwrap it and roll it around. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B. Looks like I'm about to go off the edge of this your screen. A, B, C, D, E, C, D. I'll put E and F out here, even though you can't see them. Okay. So, D plus 1, A, B, C, D, E. D plus 1 is E. And so here we are at E, and then we need to go 5 more. All right, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That gives us 3. All right, so when we carry the 1, I'll put a 1 up there. When we carry the 1, that's like saying, hey, we're going to go this far. And then for change, we'll put a 3 right here. Okay, so let me do that one more time. We're at D right here. And then D plus 1 is E. And then we're going to go 5 more, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right? So the carry gives us all of this. And then the leftover change, here's the change. That's why I have a 3 here. Okay, A plus 1 plus 0 makes a B. All right, and then we can double check this by converting this to decimal and doing the decimal add. We can even convert it to binary, do a binary add. That'd be a very useful exercise for you. I strongly recommend doing it. Get used to working in these numbers. Um, and then when, once you've done all that and you feel really good about it, just to triple check, remember I've shown you the Windows calculator here. I think we did this with binary. Uh, view, go to programmer. And we've seen decimal, we've seen binary, and remember when I click binary here, let's go over here, when I click binary, all of my digits go away except 0 and 1, so you see that now I can type in zeros and 1s. But now I can click hex, and then watch what happens when I click hex, all these digits turn back on, plus the letters. Okay. In fact, I think it's unfortunate. That it looks like they color-coded the letters differently from the numbers when really they're still digits in our base 16 system, and I can punch them in like so. Uh, anyway, let's let's uh, how do I clear? Let let's uh, type this in and see. Let, let, let's add these using, using the calculator. So it looks like we have uh, A D. Eight, and you can hit your keyboard too. The calculator will respond to the keyboard. Like if I hit three, three. Oh, sorry. Let's go back one. Three. So eighty-three uh, F two one plus zero five seven. Notice it dropped the leading zero. Uh, e B eight seven equals B three zero. B30, 2A88, 2A88. That's interesting. It still groups them into fours as well. Huh. That's, that, that's probably actually useful because, uh, well, we'll talk about that later. Notice down here, uh, we have the, I love this view. They really improved this calculator back when I started using it. But um, we have the binary values right here. So no matter which representation we switch to, Oh, there's octal, but decimal, hex, binary, it doesn't really matter. Notice the the binary value is still down here, and it's always down here. We can see the bits, and if I click hex and I said, hey, convert this to binary, well, you could say, well, look, this is an 8, right? Let me get a real thin, thin here. This is just like we did in the last video. I want, I want, I want to 
more thin, thinner. This is an eight. Remember, this represents eight. Eight zero zero zero. That's an eight. Okay, and then eight plus two in decimal makes a ten, and the ten in uh, hex is an a. Then look here, we have another a, so that goes with that. And then here we have a two. That's two's two's in binary are easy, right? It's just this one turned on. So there's our two, and then we have a zero. Okay, nice grouping here. And then this looks like a three, which it is right there. And then here's our B, okay, or actually our 11, 8 plus 2 plus 1 is 11 decimal, so to say. And then the rest of these are all are all turned off. Look at look at all these leading zeros. They used up two rows for it, but these these leading zeros, and then lead, these leading zeros, all these are leading zeros, and they are all turned off. Looks like they have a 64 bit. They they've given us 64 bits here, and you might think, Jamie, why are you saying 64 when you circled the number 63? Well, well <coughs> remember we're zero based, so we have 64 numbers, but we start counting at zero. All right, and so they have the bit positions here, which is quite nice. So zero to 15. So here's the first. 16 bits. Here's the next 16 bits. So that goes uh, up to 31. Then the next 16 bits is 32 up to 47 and so on. And then here's the next 16 bits. That's nice. That's that's always like when you go into program review, that's the mode that Windows Calculator will maintain for you. So no matter what representation you're working here, you can always see the bits if you like. Refer to this if you want to. If I click binary, you notice that these numbers are identical to these numbers. So ah, there you go. Whew. Okay, and then in future videos we'll get into what the rest of these buttons do. But I, ah, I'm such a geek. I really like this. Let's. Uh, I think we're done.